everybody. Yebo Manzazi. Oh, it is wonderful to be back in South Africa. Everybody have a seat. Everybody have a seat. Relax. Yeah, I'm excited too. It is wonderful to be here with all these extraordinary young people, pe young people from across this magnificent country, but also from all across the continent. A and I want to give special thanks and special welcome to those who are watching from Nigeria and Uganda and Kenya, uh, a country obviously very close to my heart. You know, w when I travel around the world, this is one of my favorite things to do, meeting and talking with young men and women like you. And our format today, uh, this town hall, is uh, a longstanding tradition in America. Uh, and I get asked all sorts of things. Uh, I remember one event, a person asked a question that's often on a lot of people's minds uh, when I show up, uh, where's Michelle? <laughs> Sometimes people ask me, yeah, you seem to have gotten so old since you were elected. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so this format can be a little humbling, but uh, it, it energizes me uh, because it gives me a chance uh, uh, to hear from you directly uh, what you're thinking, what you care about, what your vision is. And I'm making this trip to Africa because I believe this is a region on the move. Even as this continent faces great challenges, and they are great, and we can't paper over them or, or, or pretend that those challenges don't exist. Even as too many Africans still endure tremendous hardship and great injustice, there is, as the song says, a new Africa, more prosperous, more confident, taking its place on the world stage. And one of the reasons is because of your generation. And it's fitting that we've gathered here, in Joburg, in Soweto, because here we learn that history is in our hands. Not far from here, in Orlando West, two young men came of age who would transform this nation and inspire the world, Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. And President Mandela once said that during all those years in that cell, it was his home here in Soweto, that small red brick house that was what he called the center point of my world. And obviously, he's on our minds today. And we join the people of the world in sending our prayers to Madiba and his family because he still inspires us all. Now, not far from here, on a June morning, young students gathered in peaceful protest for the right to be taught in their own language, for the right to be treated like human beings. And after all the police bullets, after the smoke cleared, the world was shocked by that image, protesters holding the body of a young boy, Hector Peterson. And what a powerful tribute it is to Hector's sacrifice and to all who struggled that we can gather here today in a free South Africa, at a university that serves all South Africans. And I know the story of Soweto inspires you in your lives, but keep in mind it inspired me too. The uprising here helped open my mind to a broader world and to our responsibilities to choose between fairness and injustice, between right and wrong. And as a senator, during my first visit to South Africa, I was able to go to Hector Peterson's memorial and, and pay tribute to an African boy who moved the world and humbled by the sacrifices of all who've gone before us so that we can stand here as free men and women. I'm honored to return to Soweto now as President of the United States of America. Now, tomorrow I'll be down in Cape Town at the University of Cape Town, and I'll speak about the future that we can build together, 
Africans and Americans. And that's where Robert Kennedy delivered his eloquent address to another generation of young people. The challenges of our world, he said, demand the qualities of youth. Not a time in life, but a state of mind, a temper of the will, a quality of the imagination, a predominance of courage over timidity, of the appetite for adventure over the love of ease. That's what young people are. That's the spirit of youth, and it's still true. And that's why three years ago I launched a new effort to make sure we're tapping those qualities of youth, the imagination, the courage, the yes-we-can attitude of young Africans like you. It's our Young African Leaders Initiative, and I kicked it off by welcoming young men and women from across Africa to the White House, and we had a town hall uh, similar to this one. I think some of you were there, in fact. And since then, we've helped empower young people across this continent with new skills in entrepreneurship and leadership and new partnerships in education and health and technology. You know, Michelle came here to Soweto for a forum with some inspiring young women. And, and she's here today uh, in Josie, uh, meeting with students who... <laughs> Did I say that one? Meeting with students who, like you, are going to determine the future of your countries. So today, I'm proud to announce a significant expansion of this initiative. We're launching a new program that's going to give thousands of promising young Africans, like you, the opportunity to come to the United States and develop your skills at some of our best colleges and universities. called the Washington Fellowship for Young African Leaders. And I hope all of you apply, because we're joining with our top schools, public and private. We'll focus on civic leadership and public administration and business and entrepreneurship, the skills you need to serve your communities and start and grow businesses and run effective ministries. And you'll interact with Americans from all walks of life, because our citizens, especially our young people, can learn from you, too. You'll meet with leaders in business and nonprofits and government, including me. Uh, and I look forward to welcoming you at a summit that I'll host in Washington because I want to hear directly from you, your hopes, your dreams, what we can achieve together. And your time in America will be just the beginning. Uh, when you come back home, new grants will help you turn your ideas into new businesses and new nonprofits. And we're going to partner with American companies here in Africa to provide internships and mentoring and job opportunities to help you grow into the next generation of business leaders. We're going to partner with your governments and regional organizations here in Africa and foundations and civil society to amplify your voices as you stand up for democracy and equality. And with the connections you make as a Washington Fellow, you'll have something else for the rest of your life, and that is a network of Africans and Americans ready to collaborate on the future that you want to build. So this won't be the most expensive program that we have, but I actually believe this is going to end up being one of the most important. And it's important to me personally, because it's a great way for me to show my faith and confidence in all of you. I believe in you. And I intend to make this a lasting part of our engagement with Africa beyond my presidency for years to come. We want to empower entrepreneurs like uh, Fred, Sw uh, Fred uh, Swanaker. Where's Fred? He's from Ghana. Where is he? There he is, he's Fred. So Fred's got a fan club over here. Fred helped to start a biotech company and now uses his expertise to help other young Africans develop their leadership skills so that they can come back and put those skills to use, serving their communities, starting businesses, creating jobs. So thank you, Fred, for the great work that you're doing. We want to empower citizens like uh, Khadija Patel. Where's Khadija? Where's Khadija? 
So, Khadija is a fearless journalist here in South Africa. She's reported on Sudan and Mali and the Democratic Republic of Cong Congo. She's exposed, uh, exposed the roots of conflict. She's challenged leaders as a voice for peace and justice. So we're very proud of the work that you do, Khadija. Thank you. We want to empower advocates like Jacob Jabari. Where's Jacob? Right here. So here in South Africa, Jacob decided he was not going to hide the fact that he was HIV positive. He embraced it. He became a counselor. He helps guide others because he says the key to saving lives and slowing the spread of AIDS is an honest approach. And that takes great courage. Thank you, Jacob. And we want to empower women like Lebu uh, Bogipane. Lebu. You know, growing up, Lebo endured domestic abuse and violence, uh, which led to homelessness and hunger. Over many years, she didn't simply rebuild her own life. She built a crisis center here in South Africa that's helped thousands of women and children escape abuse as well. What a great legacy. Thank you, Lebo. So building the future that you seek Realizing the vision that you have, not just for your own countries, but for the world, uh, it will not be easy. It will not be easy. But as you go forward, uh, I want you to think of the man who's in our prayers today. Think, think about 27 years in prison. Think about the hardships and the struggles and being away from family and friends. Reflecting on his years in prison, Nelson Mandela wrote that there were dark moments that tested his faith in humanity, but he refused to give up. And he said, I'm fundamentally an optimist. Whether it comes from nature or nurture, I cannot say. Part of being optimistic is keeping one's head pointed towards the sun, one's feet moving forward. So in your lives, there will be time to test your faith. But no matter how old you grow, I say, you, say to all of you today, don't lose those qualities of youth, your imagination, your optimism, your idealism, because the future of this continent is in your hands. And if you keep your head pointed towards the sun and you keep your feet moving forward, I promise you will have no better friend and partner than the United States of America. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.